Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So today we're looking at Mac. Now everyone who's watching this video is going to have played DCS or for some flight sims or have some interest in aviation. So you all know roughly what Mac means and that is it's a name or term associated with the speed of sound. So we know if our jet fighter goes Mac 1 then it's going the speed of sound. If the SR-71 goes Mach 3, then it's moving at three times the speed of sound. But we want to look into it a little more deeply. It's a little more complicated and needs a little more understanding. So we're going to look very briefly at the history of Mac. Then we're going to look a little closer in terms of Mac and how the fact that it's actually a dynamic speed and not a static speed. Uh, that's something that needs understanding. And then we're going to look at why we care about Mac, why we want it to know about it in our aeroplane. So the word Mach, M-A-C-H, came from a famous scientist known as Ernst Mach. And his name will forever be linked with the speed of sound because of his work in the late 19th century developing tools of measuring and photographing supersonic shock waves. So we've got a portrait of the man himself here. And here we've got something that looks like it's come directly out of NASA. But this picture was actually taken, well, uh, we'll read here, the photograph taken by physicist Ernst Mach in 1888 in Prague using Schlieren photography on a 5mm diameter negative it depicts, the, it depicts the strong and weak waves around a supersonic brass bullet. So that's nearing 150 years ago this stuff could be essentially measured and photographed. So next a quick look into Mark's background. This is a website I've chosen. I will link the website in the video description. He lived 1838 to 1916. I won't read all of this, but Ernst Mach was a physicist and philosopher who was best known for his work in optics, mechanics and wave dynamics. He is credited with deriving the Mach principle, which explains the phenomenon, phenomenon of inertia by assuming that all of the masses in the universe are somehow connected. His name is often remembered through the Mach number, which is synonymous with supersonic speed. He is considered a founder of the philosophy of science and his scepticism of the old physics was important to the next generation of young physicists including Albert Einstein and you can see how just what we were talking about there is kind of it's kind of basic um, connection to the theory of relativity you can see that kind of coming through the generations so a very clever bloke as we would say in England and um, it had a very large scope of what he studied and the work that he did and if you want to know more about it then we've got the website here come and read all about it what we're really interested in just for this video is Mach also studied the propagation of sound waves which gave rise to the term Mach number and Mach angle developing high speed photographic techniques in the process he used Schlieren method along with his son Ludwig to photograph the shadow of the invisible shock waves so that there is his connection to what we're interested in today, which is the speed of sound and the effects that come with it. So that's all the background we're going to look at. Next, we're going to jump to our aviation calculator. Whenever we're talking about speeds, pressures, uh, temperatures, anything like that, I always advise this website. There are many others, and I'm sure they're all very good, but this is just the one that I've settled on. That, that's it there, and I will link it again in the video description. So a basic misconception, if we down, go down here to speed conversions, is that Mac, if we just look at Mac 1, the speed of sound, is that a misconception is that it's always at a set speed. That's not true. And this is something I've learned relatively recently myself, that the Mac is a very dynamic number. The speed of sound depends on the fluid around it. It depends, and the fluid is air, obviously. It depends how hot that fluid is. It depends how dense that fluid is. And so to us, that means a different temperatures i.e. you know whether it's a hot day whether it's a cold day whatever is going to vary what speed in terms of you know meters per second feet per second miles per hour that mach 1 is at and also altitudes as we all know as you go up in altitude air pressure will reduce density will reduce therefore mach will change and it's very important to understand this concept so let's just do some very basic tests so for this test we've got constants are uh, i think we've got it here these calculations are based on the international standard of atmosphere so the international standard of atmosphere i believe is 1515 degrees celsius not centigrade but celsius we have to say in aviation at sea level and a air pressure q and h at sea level of 29.92 inches mercury i'm not sure what that is in metric millimeters mercury so bearing in mind those constants let's have an altitude of on the deck let's say 50 feet shall we and let's ask the computer what is mach 1 so mach 1 the speed of sound 
is 660 CAS, calibrated airspeed, 661 TAS, true airspeed, these are knots by the way, uh, equivalent airspeed EAS of 660. Now, remember that the only true measurement of speed here is that we're thinking in the true terms of speed in physics, i.e. a distance over a certain amount of time, meters per second, feet per second, miles per hour, whatever. True airspeed here is the only actual true speed, hence the name. Equivalent airspeed is actually to do with pressure differentials, calibrated airspeed, pressure differentials, indicated airspeed, which isn't here for some reason, pressure differentials. Uh, just uh, out of interest to diverge a bit where you're likely to see these calibrated airspeed, you'd like to see that in a modern fighter, kind of HUD in DCS equivalent airspeed. I expect you'd see that in a large uh, transport aircraft or a liner. True airspeed, the only actual true speed here would be shown in a tactical display like TID, like a situational awareness page, like a radar page, as well as its closely linked brother, ground speed. Okay, so what then happens, so these are all about 660, 661 knots. What happens if we go up to, uh, if we're in SR71 and we go up to 75,000 feet or however high it can go, I can't remember. And let's compute uh, Mac 1. Well, Mac 1 is completely different now due to temperature change, density change, pressure, air pressure change. The true airspeed of Mach 1 is now 577 knots, not 661 knots. So it's very highly different. And this is not relevant today, but just out of interest, CAS, uh, calibrated airspeed or near air, uh, indicated airspeed is 138 and 122 for equivalent airspeed. So the actual speed of Mach 1, of the speed that the sound travels through air, has reduced by nearly 100 knots. This is one of the many reasons why, uh, or well, this is one of the smaller reasons, I should say, why a fighter can produce higher Mach numbers at high altitude. Mainly aerodynamic, obviously, but this is one reason. Because sound goes slower at that speed. And when we're talking about Mach, we're always talking about Mach relative to the altitude of the aircraft. We're never talking about it relative to a static point on the Earth, it's always where that aircraft is, which is why Mach is a dynamic speed, and that's why... I've highlighted this to you today. Now, uh, constants, we've talked about Q and H, and we've talked about ambient sea level temperature. If they change, they're constants in here, but if they change, I don't think we've got the ability to do this in this website, all of this will change again. So if it heats up from 10 degrees Celsius at the ground to 40 degrees Celsius in the ground because we've moved to the desert, these figures all change, task changes, the speed of sound changes. If it gets colder, then it all changes again. If Q and H pressure changes, then the speed of sound changes. The speed of sound is always changing depend on the atmospheric conditions and where you are in terms of altitude, and hence is fully dynamic. And because it's very dynamic, we must know as a fighter pilot, as really any fast jet pilot, what Mach number we are doing in our aircraft. And the reason why we have to know what Mach number we're doing is because there will be certain important effects on our airframe based on the Mach number, not based on the speed, remember, not based on the EAS, not based on the IAS or CAS, only based on Mach, which is why you must know what Mach you're doing. Good example, just did a video on Mach tuck. This is an effect that affects you in the transonic region, which is a region of speed relative to this Mach number. Now, the different aircraft will have slightly different ratios. So some aircraft will be affected 0.9 Mach up to 1 Mach, some 0.8 Mach up to 1 Mach, some 0.6 Mach up to 1 Mach, as in that video. So each plane is going to be different, but it's all relative to Mach. And therefore, you have to know your speed relative to Mach to be prepared for these certain effects like Mach tuck, which will, if you remember in that video, kind of suck your nose down. I know you, physics never sucks, but um, you could kind of suck your nose down and crash you. And hence, every single fighter, pretty much every plane that can go within transonic region will have a Mac meter whopping great one up there on an F-18 or something on your on your HUD so you can't miss it you know where the Mac is you know when you're getting relative to Mac effects or if you don't have a HUD you know in your Tomcat or your F-5 or your Viggen you're a whopping great Mac meter there near or fixed into the speedo so that you always know what your relationship is to the Mac that your aircraft is currently at and that's it that's all I wanted to say. That's stuff, like I said, I've learned recently. My understanding of Mac has, um, uh, has really changed now, and I understand the importance of it and how it's measured, how it varies with altitude, how even doing uh, the fast speed trials. I've been doing fast speed trials with aircraft lately, going Mac 2, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, and how that varies at different altitudes, what it actually means, that it doesn't actually mean a physical speed 
per se. Mach is its own unit of measurement and it doesn't have a relationship per se with the other measurements. So that's it. Go and uh, um, uh, look at your Mac and your planes and um, keep an eye on your Mac. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helps and I'll see you later.